Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Collins, you and I share a passion and a personal priority of investing in our nation's next generation of researchers. Um, I think most everyone on the subcommittee knows from my retelling the story that um, I, was, uh, I was raised by my grandparents and my grandfather was an NIH funded uh, scientist, a biochemist. And so I grew up understanding the importance of the contributions of our researchers to biomedical leadership. In 2013, I had a particularly uh, powerful meeting with a high school uh, student. Um, he was a bone cancer survivor from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and his name is Ian. And Ian told me that cancer research helped save his life. He... Um, decided at that point that he wanted to grow up to be a scientist and to help others who had the disease. But he was concerned that it wouldn't be possible for him to break in as a new researcher due to NIH funding cuts. Um, Ian inspired me to author the Next Generation Researchers Act with my colleague uh, Susan Collins to improve NIH opportunities for our new and early stage researchers. I am proud to report to you that Ian has graduated from college and is now working in a lab with a scientist at um, Huntsman Cancer Institute in Salt Lake City, Utah, studying pediatric cancers like osteosarcoma. Um, I applaud NIH's progress in implementing my Next Generation Research Initiative um, to help support future scientific leaders like Ian. Um, in fact, as you noted, uh, NIH funded 1,287 early stage investigators in 2018 as part of this work, the largest number in history. I would um, love it if you could um, elaborate on NIH's work to um, implement this initiative since it was signed into law back in 2016 and your plans for implementing it moving forward and any comments you might have about the National Academy's um, uh, consensus study report on the next generation of biomedical and behavioral sciences researchers. Well, Senator, I really appreciate the way you have drawn attention to this critical issue, and we've named our initiative uh, the Next Generation Researchers Initiative after uh, what you authored because we were totally in sync with this as one of our highest priorities. Uh, when Ian asked you the question, how we were funding, according to the graph here, if it was 2013, less than 600 early stage investigators, uh, and that was a time where it was challenging for somebody trying to get their career started to have confidence that there was going to be a path forward. Notice what has happened since then, thanks uh, to the strong support of this committee and to our prioritizing early stage investigators as the most important applicants that we see. And yes, we are now in 2018 up to 1,287. Uh, we aim to try to keep a level in that space uh, going forward. I think that's a pretty healthy number. This is not one of those where we want to go up and then go back down again, because uh, there's plenty of remarkable talent out there. So in addition uh, to, of course, uh, trying to be sure that we are doing this in a fashion that attracts really talented people, we also are focused on diversity. We want to have more women in this category because we still have not achieved the point where our grantee pool is what it could be. Given that uh, PhDs now are being granted 50-50 to men and women, yet we still as first-time applicants to NIH, it's about 30 percent that are women. We're coming up with ways to try to make this pathway seem more appealing and for us to be more welcoming. And of course, that means dealing with the sexual harassment issues that Senator Murray rightly brought up earlier. We did support that report from the National Academy, uh, and we have uh, a strong agreement with many of its recommendations in terms of what we need to be doing to sustain this. But as I briefly said earlier, I am perceiving, and Ian is a great example, of a good deal of a change in the enthusiasm and excitement out there in institutions of young graduate students, postdocs, junior faculty who really see, okay, this is a good time to be in science, not a time where we have to worry about our future quite as much as we did five or six years ago. So thank you for the way you've supported this. Well, thank you. I've been concerned that uh, President Trump's budget would cut NIH funding by over $4 billion, um, as years of budget cuts are one of the primary factors in discouraging, historically, young scientists from getting into the field. 
um, or forcing them to leave the field in other in, to pursue careers in other countries or um, in other realms. Um, it, yet no investment in my mind uh, promises greater returns for America than our investment in um, biomedical research. Um, will the Next Generation Researchers in Initiative deliver on its promise and be able to continue to hit such ambitious milestones as you're describing mm -hmm. under the administration's proposal to reduce overall funding for the NIH? Well, of course, everything we do depends on the overall support that we have available. This uh, Congress and this particular uh, subcommittee has been uh, very attentive to that and the opportunities that we've had over these four years uh, of seeing our budgets uh, go up by a total of 30 percent have made a lot of these things possible. Uh, we always, though, have to adjust based upon the resources that we have. I will tell you of the institutes at this table and the others who are not here, this funding of early stage investigators is one of our highest priorities. We will seek to make that happen to the level that we can with the resources we've got. Thank you. And Chairman Blunt and Ranking Member Murray, I oppose the President's um, budget request uh, to slash funding for NIH, and I look forward to working with both of you to increase funding both for NIH and for a special focus on the Next Generation um, Researchers Initiative in the fiscal year 2020 budget.